Hello and welcome to another episode of SellMyComicBooks.com Vintage Comic Book Unboxing. I'm Ashley, and for once, I get to unbox a collection, because normally I buy everything and it all gets shipped to Sean back at the head office. But today, we're celebrating our 200th unboxing video with a really special X-Men collection. So let's get into it. It's actually very difficult to do unboxing videos on your own. Uh, I've done in the past holding my phone, but it's challenging to hold the phone and go through the box at the same time. So I'm going to kind of try with my laptop. Um, but I just thought I'd show you the first book from this collection. It's an X-Men number one. And the previous owner had it sent off to CGC. It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, Actually, a really nice looking 4.5 with off-white white pages. It's got a hand stamp on the back, like a receiving stamp. One of the staples is little, well, both of the staples actually are a little dark, like they're not rusty, but kind of discolored. But, I really don't know why this is only a 4.5. I'm going to have to go to CGC and get the graders notes for this and find out why it's a 4.5. Maybe there's a big tear on an inside page or something. But uh, it's a really nice looking copy. And this is going into my personal collection. Because I don't have an X-Men one. Well, I do now. But there's much more to this collection than uh, CGC graded X-Men 1. The rest of it is uncertified, and I think I'm just going to flip through the books with my laptop like this. So let's, let's do it. There's no number 2 or number 3. We do have an X-Men number 4, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. It's, uh, it's a big key issue. See, looking at this book, I'd say this looks like a 4 or 5, but... Um, Number one's nice than a four five. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's number four. Number five. Number eight, the first appear of the untouchable anus. Number ten, a Kazar issue. Oh, that's interesting. They're, they're double sided. There's number nine. Oh look, there's number seven. There you go. So I guess they ran out of bags and boards, and there's there's two per bag and board. There we go. Number eleven. Number twelve. Number thirteen. First juggernaut. Number fourteen. Sentinels. I don't know. One of these is uh, isn't Professor X's origin? That's number twelve. Okay. Number fifteen and number sixteen. 17, number 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Oh. For some reason, we jumped straight to 99. What's going on? Hang on a minute. I must have put a chunk in the wrong place. 27 and 28, which is first Banshee. And 29 and 30. And they're slowly getting nicer. I'd say now, we're seeing some tanning on these covers, but since about number 20, I think we're about five or six on most of these in the fine range. 31 and 32. We're coming up to one of my favorite issues in a second. 33 and 34. Here is one of my favorite issues, the Spider-Man cover. Number 35, very cool issue. 36. 37, 38, 39, and 40. That's the Frankenstein cover. I think that's actually the first Marvel Frankenstein comic book. 
41 and 42. That's the death of Professor X. Yeah, sure. 43 and 44. And we're starting to get into the period of the X-Men run where prices start to jump again. That The 40-odd uh, the area doesn't really do that very well. Prices are not that great. And then after the Spider-Man one, and then you get into like the number 50 area, you've got some uh, Neil Adams covers coming out. Some of these are actually quite valuable. These are quite nice looking books now. Just looking at this one, it's probably a seven. There's some tanning, I can see tanning on the number 47 there. There's still some tanning. I think these were stored in the wrong kind of environment. Uh, it's 49, and this is one of my favorite covers. This is a Staranko cover. It's really cool. Like, yellow and green color. Number 51, 52, 53, 54. Another one of my favorite colors, that's really cool. 55, 56, first, is that first? Have I don't know my X-Men keys as well as I should. But that, that might be first. Uh, no, no, Havoc's later, isn't it? Yeah. It's in the 60s. Yeah, we'll come to that for sure. 57. Oh, there, 58. There you go. First Havoc. Even says it on the cover. Oh. Lazy people like me haven't learned their keys. 59 and 60. I just watched the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy again, and uh, I guess they, they stole Sauron from Tolkien. 61, 69 and 70. Now we're into the, uh, the firmly in the reprint issues. It's actually quite a difficult run of books to put together. These reprints that uh, kept the series going, kept the series from being cancelled. Um, so you try and put together a high grade run of these reprints, it's not that easy. It's number 73 and 74. These are called. Um, these picture frame covers where you have like a colored frame around the edge and then the image in the center. These are quite hard to get in high grade. And these are not high grade. This looks like about 7.5 or something like that. It's got quite a lot of spine stress. 75 and 76. 77 and 78. 79 and 80. 81 and 82, 83, reprint the Spy Man cover, 84, 85 and 86, 87, 88, 88, is that the uh, Frankenstein reprint? Yep. 89 and 90, 91 and 92, Think. Yeah, that's what that little chunk was. Number 93, the last reprint issue, which means on the back of this one is da -da -da, number 94, the new team with Wolverine and without taking out the bag, I'm going to spot grade this at an 8. So the books have been gradually getting nicer. An eight is no great shakes, but still worth, I think, off the top of my head, two or two hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. It's a nice looking copy. Actually, this is one of the Bronze Age issues. You have to be careful when you're buying it. Um, make sure it's not being color touched. It's quite common to find this color touch. It's a dark bottle green cover, and people sometimes just color touch it. This looks fine. It's quite nice. So these are all in the wrong order now. 
five, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, and one hundred. And that means over here is first Phoenix from one hundred one. Got nice clean staples. This is a nice copy actually. The spine's really, really, really nice. Open them and look at the back. It's got some pressable defects. It's very clean. This could be a uh, this could be a nine six when it's pressed. Very nice. It's a nice copy. Put that back in the bag later. Why it's used on the back, I'm not going to turn that over. 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110. Better start a new stack or they're going to fall over. That would be disastrous. 111, and 112. 113, 114, Sauron's back, 115, 116, that's a bondage cover, like Bronze Age bondage was like Golden Age bondage, 117 and 118, 119, and then another key issue, 120, first Alpha Flight, this one's very seldom in high grade because it's got that purple spine. Hmm. There's a spine stress mark there. This could be a 9.4. I'm not even going to take it out of the bag. 121, 122. We're really in the, the bronze era where everybody wants to own a run of these. 123, 124. These are commonly called the... Um, the burn run, John Burn run. 125, 126. And really everyone wants that run between like 101 and 141. 127, 128. Getting into the first dazzler in a second. 129. And there's 130. Believe it or not, this book is picking up because there's a lot of speculation that Dazzler's going to be in a movie, like, honestly. Let sleeping dogs lie, if you ask me. 131, 132, 133, and 134, 135, and 136, 137, and 138. These books in 9.8 are usually worth a couple hundred bucks. I don't know if these are that nice. Probably not. Nothing in this collection looks like a 9.8. 139 and 140. Now the final book in this run that's really expensive is uh, Days of Future Past. Obviously that movie has come and gone and it's no longer a hot book, but this one's quite a nice looking copy. It might be a 9.6. Yeah, it's still worth a couple couple of hundred bucks in 96. 142, that's the second part of the story, I think. And now, honestly, I'm not going to get into showing you every single cover because this run goes all the way up to, I believe, 300 and something, and it's going to take me another hour. So I'm just going to do a quick flip through. 168 there, that's a key. One of these 160 somethings is a key. Let's look at uh, first Baby Nathan. 201. Um, we've got some Wolverine covers. 207. 211 maybe is a Wolverine cover. Good memory there. And the 212. I think there's a big Wolverine storyline in this part of the run. Some of these are stuck together. 221's first Mr. Sinister. It's a copper age key issue. 
It's got a stacking bend, but otherwise it looks perfect. I'd say that's probably going to be a 9.8 and Sean's pressed it. Uh, 244 is a very minor key. I think it's first Jubilee or something. I don't know. Is that first Jim Lee art on X-Men? Dustin Jim Lee art. One of them. Anyway. One's Jubilee and one's Jim Lee. I can't, I can't get them mixed up in my head because they sound the same and I can't think of a way to remember them. But they're both here anyway. 244, 248. And we all know what 266 is, I hope. Actually, it might be in another box. Hang on. No, there it is. First Gambit. This is not a 9 8. The spine stress. It's probably a 9 4. And that's the end of that box. As far as I know, we might as well call that a wrap because I don't think there's anything else that's valuable. This run must go to number 400. Let's put these back in the box for a second, so they don't fall down and wreck all those great Silver Age books. see the later stuff. I never asked to see, uh, I usually ask to see number 282, that's the first bishop. There we go. This is either 9-8 or a dollar bin book, and this is a dollar bin book. I never get to see these other ones, because uh, really they're not worth very much, they're not usually worth shipping, but this guy dropped them off to my house, so, um, well you got like the typical gold, silver foil cover shit. Number 300. There's some actual, uh, there are some variants of some of these, but I don't think we're going to have them in here. Some gold foil variants and stuff that are out in the marketplace. This is a nice reminder of the excesses of uh, the 90s. It's got a hologram stuck to the front. Can you see that? Ooh, shiny. Ooh, three dimensional. Oh, I mean, of course. We were suckers for that stuff when we were kids, but it's kind of embarrassing to look back at what they did in the 90s now. All the, all the excesses of the crossovers, like, you know, blood ties. Um, so if you wanted to read the story, you had to buy books from all kinds of series and, you know, almost put Marvel and DC out of business. All this sort of silver foil on the front cover stuff, multiple copies of the same book. You had to buy if you wanted to be a completist, basically milking you. But uh, I don't know. maybe I can show you this. That might be possible. Let's just try that. You know what? I might just end up editing this whole thing out because <laughs> you can't see anything. Um, basically, I'm looking at a full run of. All the 90s X-Men. Uncanny X-Men, that is. Not all the stuff. If I see any cool covers, I'll, I'll pull one out. There's a, there's a Wolverine cover. Uh, I can't even see the issue number because they put them in tiny. That's 323. Special anniversary. Another special anniversary issue. My God, they have so many anniversaries, don't they? I can't even tell which issue number it is. Wonderful. Um... Very scary looking Wolverine. Basically stuff I've never seen because I don't buy modern books unless there's some special reason to buy them, like the guy dropped them off at my house and I'm not going to say no because they're already here. Um, just, I, mean, I just don't, I don't resonate with this kind of art. This, this is just not my thing, you know. It's, I grew up with Silver Age comics, so modern stuff just doesn't appeal to me. It's kind of, kind of cool, I suppose. Yeah, well, you've seen the best of it. 
you'll just have to take my word for it that there is a full run here. Oh, it goes beyond number 400. Look at that. It's number 401. That means number 400 is there. Boom. So what does it go to? 500? Yeah. 430, 50. Clan months on some of these, apparently. 45, 491. Got no idea if any of this is worth anything. It's number 500. I suspect it's not. Oh, that's kind of a cool cover. I like playing poker. 503. Um, I think the last issue in this box is. Oh, it's a fear itself. Crossover. 543. So there you go, guys. That is our complete run of Uncanny X-Men from number one, missing number two and three, all the way to number 543. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please check us out at sellmycomicbooks.com and on Facebook at Sell My Comic Books. See you again next time. Bye.